Hello, welcome to Anchat. My name is Chris Murrow. Woodland poppy seeds. Uh, woodland poppy is a native plant that is uh, pretty much it's a uh, well, it's a perennial, uh, which means it lives for you know more than three years. Uh, woodland plant, so it likes shade or semi-shade. Uh, you don't find it growing in full sun. Uh, has a nice yellow flower to it and multiple flowers per plant, which uh, I believe is normal for poppies. Most poppies. Uh, actually, some poppies are monofloral, so that's something to uh, think about there. But anyway, it has a nice little yellow flower. It looks kind of... it looks best when it's sort of almost open, not when it's fully open, as you see here. And, uh, I mean, it's every bit as uh, pretty as the uh, perennials that you find out in the out west. Or not... Uh, it's every bit as pretty as the California poppies you find out west. So here we're just examining a plant. And you can see Creeping Charlie's uh, still around here. It is, I think we're in the last week of May, and you see, you know, it still has flowers to be opened, you know, so it has a very long uh, bloom date, and I'd say every flower successfully produces a seed pod, and just looking around here, I mean, they've started to pop open on their own, and you can see what that looks like right here. So let's crack one open, which literally you just kind of squeeze it and it just pops right open. Uh, inside there are little black seeds, and they have this white substance on them called Elysium. And anyone who knows uh, me knows I love uh, plants that are distributed by ants, and Elysium is how this is uh, accomplished. So when we have the uh, seed here, oh, yeah, well, if we can get this in focus here, uh, it's a little black thing. Seeds are really hard, like popcorn kernels. The Elysium on this particular plant is, it, it actually looks like it's kind of fuzzy. And I set up a uh, sort of example here. So our first contestant is a Temnothrax species, and it wanted nothing to do with those. And something I found out, uh, there's a whole bunch of plants that do this. Um, let's see, uh, twin leaf, violets, most most violets I should say do this, uh, not all of them. Uh, trilliums are always a good one. Uh, uh, what, wild ginger, bloodroot, uh, and like maybe six or seven others, but anyway, a lot of these plants they have the uh, they want ants to uh, plant the seeds, and they do this by putting little packets of ant food on them. But some ants really don't want anything to do with these seeds, and others, you know, they they absolutely love them. In this case, we have Campanatus pensivonicus, which is a major worker in particular. Which this is the uh, large black car uh, carpenter ant, which you find like it 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 is a pest species, but I find it's actually you know. If, if, uh, it's a pest species when they're nesting in your house, and if they're nesting in your house, then chances are you have water damage. If you have water damage, you need to probably see about re you know redoing your roof or something, you know hiring a uh, you know respectable contractor, but to uh, you know uh, uh, fix the problem basically and replace the uh, the damaged wood that's up there, because you're not going to get rid of the uh, ant problem until you've you know gotten rid of the uh, nesting habit that they're taking advantage of. Uh, so, <laughs> we have these out here, and you may be wondering what this entire structure is. Basically, I found a box turtle in my yard, and my mom is in love with box turtles, so we apparently built a box turtle habitat in the backyard, so, I'm, I mean, I'm all for it, you know, it gives me a chance to plant more strawberries somewhere. And, uh, the ants have been using the outside of the, uh, well, the walls here as, like, a little highway. Campanatus pensivonicus in particular. And it's actually kind of a not really a shame that the uh, that she didn't want the uh, seeds here, but yeah. Anyway, here is Campanatus castanius, which is an orange species, and there's the turtle. We named it Shelly Doorstop because that seemed appropriate. And you can see even the uh, ground nesting species use this as a highway. It just you know it just gets them up and above, and it's just it's a direct route more to wherever it is that they want to go. But anyway, I wanted as with the uh, uh, trillium seeds. I wanted to see what works with these, so I went to the uh, tried and true uh, Aphnagaster colony. So here I am breaking a uh, seed pod open, and I discovered the uh, seed pods actually have like a dye to them. Like they actually stained my hand, uh, like a yellow color. So you may want to, I don't know, wear gloves or something. Some people are, you know, they have uh, reactions to substances inside of plants. Something to think about. I haven't puffed up or anything crazy, so that's it's good. And you can see here the Aphnagaster colony. I'm calling them Aphnagaster rudis, and I believe that is correct for the most part, but that's also a complex, so, you know, I really don't know the answer of what ant this is until I count the chromosomes. 
and I you know, <laughs> that's a bit beyond my capabilities, so we're going to call them Afnigaster Rudus for the time being. And you can see we actually excited the colony a little bit when I lifted that rock, kind of disturbed everything. When you do that, the colony is, uh, they're not in forage mode, they're kind of in pissed off mode. You know, kill everything that moves or doesn't smell like you. Like, if I grabbed a piece of, a uh, blade of grass and just started harassing them, they would attack their blade of grass. You know, regardless of the fact that it's a lot not alive. Had a few on me when we started this, and you know, you, you know I just brushed them right off, but anyway. So they know about the seeds, they're kind of interested in them. This is maybe five minutes later, they've had time to calm down. They're starting to take nib nibbles here and there, and they're kind of, you know, but like, there's still an enemy lurking about kind of mindset, so they, they really don't have time to just say, all right, drop everything, let's start foraging. You know, they really don't want to start doing that for a little bit. This is just my way of speeding up the uh, process of them finding it. Because when you have a, you know, it's, it's these ants really aren't, um, productive foragers, I'd say. Like, you saw how many ants were underneath that rock. Maybe less than 10% of the colony is actually out foraging. And even as close as what I, you know, where I put this to the nest, they would have taken them like another hour or so to really find it. So, one finally t uh, found a seed and took it home. That's good. The whole process can start snowballing from here. And you can see down here, more workers have uh, decided to pick up seeds and are kind of curious about them. I know they're they want it to be food, and they you know, they want to bring it home. You know, they just they, they study it a little bit, and then they walk wander off. They're like, all right, all right, look, this checks out. You know, and they just carry it off. And these seeds they have the benefit of uh, not being as big or cumbersome as trillium seeds. Trillium seeds I've discovered were uh, they're kind of the hallmark of the uh, the, the whole Elysium uh, thing. Uh, woodland poppy I would say is a silver metal. You know, but you know, you know better. You know, better to have second best than nothing. Uh, woodland poppies are also a lot easier to grow. With trilliums, you're growing, you're, you're waiting the better half of a decade for them to flower. Uh, woodland poppies are kind, they're, they're more easy going about flowering, and each plant produces multiple flowers, which gets you multiple seed pods, which, I mean, from that one plant at the start of the video, it had like eight of them on there. You know, with, with a trillium, I only had one. Uh, another, uh, thing is, um, I actually don't know what this ant's doing, it's just hiding under a stick. But anyway, another thing to consider is the fact that it's the end of May. And, uh, you know, trilliums, they don't really set seed until, you know, just, you know end of August, uh, September-ish kind of time zone. Uh, with woodland poppy, I mean, it's still flowering, and it's probably going to flower a little bit into the summer. And, uh, well, actually a little bit into June, and then pretty much finish up, I think, is how that works. But, you know, it's... Uh, you know, it's not even summer yet, and we're actually, you know, I'm able to produce uh, seeds and spread them around. So, hopefully this plant doesn't become a super weed in my yard, but, you know, I, I'd be happy if it, even if it did. Anyway, uh, back to uh, what's going on here. So this is about a half hour into it, and they've had time to calm down from my uh, disrupting them, but there's actually a line now of ants moving these white, uh, you know, just bobbing up and down with white objects of uh, Elysium. And they've pretty much cleared out the entire seed pod. It's, you know, it's empty, pretty much, <laughs> except for a few seeds that were in there. And, uh, you know, they kind of finished up. I actually regret not giving this colony another seed pod to mess with. But I actually, like, I figured if ants can uh, grow these, then so can I. So I have uh, two stashed away inside uh, my greenhouse for right now. I'll have to open them up, dry them off, uh, let the Elysium dry up and do its thing there. And uh, hopefully this uh, win pa this next uh, winter I'll be able to get some germinated and grow them right in pots. Distribute them to friends and family and such. You know, just sort of plant the uh, seeds around. Uh, woodland poppy, I don't believe it's n native to New Jersey, but I could be growing worse things. Okay, so here we have a uh, another object here. It's a... Um, we have a log. It's not really foraged by ants that much because it hasn't had time to really... Uh, ripen, I'd, I'd, I'd use the word. And, uh, you see we zoom out here, I just have a bunch of seeds on here. And it really didn't get that much attention, for, I guess because of its location. So on another location, I had the, uh, I noticed Nylandria flavopus actually carrying the seeds off and moving them, so that's another advantage here. You know, the fact that Nylandria, a very small uh, species, uh, or very small genus of, uh, well, small in size, uh, genus of ants, or, you know, they're able to pick up the seeds and take them home and distribute them. 
you know, they couldn't do that with a trillium. And here we have a chromitigaster entering the mix. Chromitigaster didn't really... I, I, you know, this is the same combination uh, that took interest in the uh, trillium seeds last year. Chromitigaster didn't really take that much interest. I'm calling this combination of uh, chromitigaster and nylandria the usual suspects. <laughs> Just because, you know, they were all over the trilliums last year. Also, here's a metallic green sweat pea nest, which uh, is kind of neat. There's like three or four uh, of them down in here that have a, a hive. And it's kind of—it's neat how they have uh, the pollen so compacted into a neat little pellet. Also, the egg seems really long for what it should be. And later on in the year, or no, later on in the day, we had uh, more. Yeah, more than Islandria just hollowing out that uh, seed pod. And over here we have violets. Uh, violets, as I mentioned earlier, they're actually distributed by ants, but I've never really gotten it to work. I don't really recommend them. Also, they don't need ants to distribute them. If you ever, anyone who's ever grown violets knows that they spread like crazy anyway, but I see they're, you know, they're growing in places that their seeds would not otherwise have gotten unless an ant had put it there. <laughs> you know, they're, you know, inside of a pot that high <laughs> off the ground is not, you know, the violets are down there. They don't have exploding seed pods or anything. So, I couldn't help myself. I had to look in the, uh, the sweat bee nest uh, again. They're just like mason bees, or possibly carpenter bees. To be honest, I'm not sure which they are. If they're using a pre-existing cavity or modifying a, uh, just modifying a rotting log. Maybe they're somewhere in between. But, anyway, that's, uh, what's going on there. And I noticed I kind of disturbed some of the uh, holes, so I guess some of the larvae got moved around by the bees. And hopefully they develop fine. I did notice some were inside, some of the adult bees were inside the uh, little holes there and rearranging stuff. So hopefully they just get put in a new chamber and get allowed to uh, complete their life cycle. And even over here, we're still back on the log, well away from our first Afnagaster nest. An Afnagaster worker found the, uh, the, the, uh, seeds up on top of this log and started hauling them away. This is also later on in the day, if you notice the lighting kind of changed uh, since then. I'd say it was much later. So, that pretty much ends this episode. I'm showing off a honeybee uh, getting a drink here. So this has been Ant Chat, and my name's Chris Murrow, and of course I have a blog, Ant Speeds Butterflies Nature at blogspot.com. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.